Yo, 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 this is the Streetwise Podcast. We're here to help you level up your game, level up your leadership, and level up your life. I'm your host, Matthew McReynolds. I'm a multi-brand franchisee, and I'm a franchise consultant, which means I help people find, launch, and build their ideal franchise business. Our main goal is to help you get off a zero and become the person that your dreams need you to be. Buckle up, get your popcorn ready, let's go. Yo, 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 this is Streetwise. I'm your host, Matthew McReynolds. Today, we've got a very good friend of mine, Mr. Neil Reed with Grants for You. Mr. Neil, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you, Matthew. Great to be with you. Man, I really appreciate you hopping on. I know we've got a little bit of time. Um, so in the time that we have, explain to the listener what it is that you do. My company, Grants for You, finds, writes, and manages grants for small businesses and for nonprofits worldwide. Oh, that's amazing. So small businesses and nonprofits. Is the process any different when you're working with a small business versus a nonprofit? That's a great question, my friend. And, and yes, they're somewhat different. The applications ask different questions. They have different focuses. The general sequence and the general process of, of grants is about the same, however, in general. What's going on, everybody? I hope you're liking the conversation this far. Please take a moment. Give it a five-star review. It really helps spread this out to as many people as possible. All right, let's get back to the episode. Where, where does the money typically come from? I mean, when I think of a loan, I know it comes from a bank or an entity that I have to pay back. But a grant is essentially money that you're receiving that I don't have to pay back. I mean, am I right? That is correct. It's not a loan. They don't want a portion of your business, not equity. It is a grant, kind of like where many of us had uh, in college, but with, with more zeros. Sure. Where does it come from? Who's supplying the funds? That's another great question. There are two major sources of grants. One is federal. Uh, and those are project-based, do this, build this, fix this. The other source is from foundations, mostly from family, very wealthy family foundations, but also some corporate foundations. Most of the money in grant world is on the federal side. Most of the grant applications are on the foundation side, which are mission-based. Mm, okay. So when we're talking about utilizing a grant for getting a business or getting a nonprofit going, what should, what should my mindset be if I'm a business owner, if I'm a nonprofit? Why should I utilize grants? Grants are a business or nonprofit accelerator. They're intended for small businesses or for nonprofits that have a pretty stable foundation. They're, they're generally, but not always, they're not startup money. It's not rescue money. It's an accelerator. It, it, they're looking, they, the foundations are looking for entities that are stable. They have procedures. They've got good people. Um, and because one of the questions that's asked for from many foundations is, what happens if you don't win? Will you, will you still be okay? How did you start doing this? <laughs> You're asking great questions, my friend, but that's you. Um, I was in um, high tech for many, many years and then uh, had a great uh, business, a global operation. I was doing uh, design and deployment of Wi-Fi systems in stadiums, and large public venues. COVID came along. I think all of us know that story and it, it shut down the business and I didn't know what I really wanted to do. A good friend of mine said, you're really good at contract law and you're really good at um, proposals. Why don't you look at doing grants? And so I, I looked up all of my friends who have businesses and I asked them, would you like a grant? And they were, yes. And so that's how it started. But what really accelerated it by far, what really kept me in the game was the power of networking, something you understand, Matthew. Oh, absolutely. Uh, speak into that a little bit, the power of networking. How has that helped you get this new business for you kind of off the ground? Well, it, it's it's been profound. I don't spend any money at all on Google ads, Facebook, virtual thing, digital marketing, wow. none of that, not a penny. I receive between two and five, sometimes eight referrals a day. 
Monday through Friday, um, because I belong to four great networking groups, one of which you and I are, are common to. Um, yes, sir. And, and it's just, it's fantastic. You just tell people the story. In networking, there are two things. One, you can harvest some work from it, certainly. But really what you're doing, what I've learned from really good people in networking, successful people in networking, is that you're building a, a part-time sales force at scale. That's mm -hmm. where it, it becomes really something very special and productive. Yo, 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 thanks for listening this far. It's at this point in the episode that I want to talk about Streetwise Franchising, teaching, training, building, Streetwise Franchise. As a franchise consultant, it's my job, it's my absolute pleasure, and it's my mission to help aspiring entrepreneurs find, launch, and build their ideal business. I've been a franchise owner for almost a decade. I know what it means to struggle. I know what it means to build a team. If you're ready to get off a of zero, if you're ready to build something for yourself, visit streetwisefranchising.com. Let's get the conversation started. Don't wait until tomorrow to build your future. It starts today. Streetwise Franchising. Stay humble, stay hungry, stay streetwise. Let's get back to the episode. Wow. Building a part-time sales force. I love that you just used those words. I could, we'll save, we'll save digging into that next episode when we have a little bit more time. Uh, but I am curious what, uh, what, in your opinion, what makes a good grant writer? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there, are, there is a spectrum of grant writers, a really good grant writer. I have several of them on my team. They're very fast. They're very adept at using artificial intelligence, which is a critical tool for productivity and grant writing. They're also fairly experienced and savvy in terms of businesses and also really savvy at telling a story. They need to be good, natural writers because you're telling a story about the nonprofit or the small business to foundations that may want to support them. Is there a difference between a grant writer and a grant finder. Are yes. those two different roles? Very different and, and completely interlocked. So okay. we researchers, same exact thing as there a finder. There it is. Okay, they, researcher. They know, so we have tools, really good tools, because the, the world of grants is, is vast. And so we have tools that act as a three-part um, element. One, they're a large repository. Two, um, they're, they have excellent filtering systems, the better granting. And three, they have project tracking. So what, what status of grants did you research or actually select the grants? So those three things are key. A grant researcher uses those completely. A grant writer takes the candidates, which can we start out with a pool of several hundred, and then winnow it down through four filtering steps down to a package of three. The grant writer takes that package of three and using artificial intelligence and other sources of information actually writes and applies for the grants. So, okay. So this is really good because this kind of gets into my next uh, question for you, but I really wanted to get a good grasp as, as not as quickly as you can, but maybe as, as thoroughly and efficiently just with our time constraint today. Uh, what is your process? So you meet somebody at a networking event or somebody from a networking event gives you a referral to then have a conversation with somebody that might be in need of your service. Where do you go from there? How do you get them from the initial interest and in maybe a grant could help me to actually collecting money that they can then use to build out their organization? That's a great question. So the sequence is well set and well understood. First, I reach out to them. I, I have a, I use Calendly. I send them an nice. email. Here's my Zoom or in-person link. We set it up just like you and I did, Matthew. Um, and then we set up a 30-minute discussion to talk about their nonprofit or their small business. And I just explain how grants, how they can work, where they come from, how um, the application process with the person. And then they decide if they want to go ahead or not. If they do decide to go ahead, we send them what's called a letter of engagement, a three-page Plain English, it lays out what my team is obligated to do, what they're obligated to do, mostly in terms of providing documentation, and then an outline of the timeline, which is about 90 days from when we first talk until the receipt of award or notice of rejection. 
Okay. And then so once they get, you know, to the point where they get rewarded, I mean, it's a pretty basic process after that. There's a reporting process, which is mandatory for all grants I've ever seen. So once we, when we go back and we apply for the grant, we write it in AI, we review it with the customer to make sure that what we're writing reflects their business very accurately. Then we upload it and then we set a clock. We know when to go back and check to see if we've got a notice of award or a notice of rejection. And then um, should they win, they get the customer and I get a thing called an NOA, notice of award. It takes the application and says, okay, this is what you said you're going to do with the grant. Now we're going to put your name to it. It's a contract. You're going to use the money in the following ways. And it takes, a, once that's signed by the person, it takes about a week for the funds to arrive, which arrive in one, one deposit. Uh, and then the clock runs for about a year to use those funds. And then you generally have one report at the end, what you did with the funds, how you met the key performance indicators as set forth by the foundation. And then what's the really fun part begins because most reward, most awards, most grants are recurring. So once the grantor finds you and they like your operation, they, t they typically recur the grant over three, four, five years. And so you reapply in a year and it's, it's a really magnificent, wonderful thing when it gets to that phase. Wow. So you're saying that if I qualified or if an individual qualified for a grant, there's a potential possibility for that same organization to then fund multiple projects on a recurring basis. If they yeah. still go through the, the, you know, they still have to go through the application process. The application process remains in the public domain. You still apply for it, but you have now you have they're looking for your application. They will pull it out. Grants very interesting. Yeah, grants recurring grants outnumber first time award on average about five to one. And you can see that in in the documentation that the foundations provide through an IRS form called a nine ninety. That's how you can tell the ratio of recurring to first time awards. And so we use that as part of the filtering process, by the way. But yeah, when you they're looking for you just like you're looking for them. Their foundations have a very clear set and idea and statement of what is good, what they think is good in the world. If that mission alignment, which is critical in job one in grant research, if their alignment, their mission statement aligns with what you're doing. And they grant you, you, they provide a grant. It's a it's a magnificent thing. The the objective, the true objective of a grant program is to actually have a program, not one or two or three applications, but have a recurring application. When you see nonprofits, that's that's what they do. They survive on a grant program. Absolutely. Others will just do one or two. Grant programs have close to a hundred percent win rate. They don't win every grant but they, they produce on a routine basis. They have to. A single or one-off sort of one-and-done grant, uh, you know, the odds of success are somewhere between 10 and 90%, depending on a whole number of factors. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, this is my last question for you, and then I'll let you get on with your day because I know you got a lot of great stuff. Um, who are grants typically built for? Is there an avatar that is more... Um, they have a higher chance of getting awarded a grant. Well, there are two. There are two separate pools. Not nonprofits, which compete on their own. There are many, many kinds of nonprofits. But then the small sure. business. There's a tremendous advantage if you're a woman owner, a minority owner, or a veteran. There are many foundations that are expressly set up to support those entities. That's their mission: is to support women or minorities, or in some cases also veterans. So yeah, you stand a much, much better chance if you have one of those, what are called facets. Is there a, uh, how do you, is there a, um, <laughs> how do I ask this in a, you know what, this is my show. How do you qualify to be a minority? I mean, they check your 23 and me score or what? <laughs> um, they're pretty light on that. They, they, okay. They, they, it's interesting though because they'll they will do things like oh by the way send us a ninety second selfie of yourself answering the following <laughs> question so they'll they'll they're, okay they, they're interesting but they want to see if you're a woman or a minority but but they're pretty liberal about that Matthew yeah they're, they're very generous and I I've not seen where it says well 
if you're less than one sixty fourth of yeah this group, that, no, they don't. They just say if you identify as a minority or a woman, then then they're very they want they're looking for yeses, not noes. Gotcha. No, that's cool. If you look up my 23 and me, I'm technically 42% African American, but you know, I didn't know if they send a selfie and they see the hair. It's like, okay, this guy's good. <laughs> Let him in. Let him in. Give him some money. Give him some money and send him on his way. <laughs> good, my man. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Mr. Neal, if anything, this just solidified the fact that I got to bring you back on. Stay humble, stay hungry, stay streetwise. Peace. All right, everybody. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Hey, if this episode added any value to your life at all, please like it, share it, give me a five-star review. It's the only way that this show is going to gain traction and help more people achieve their dreams. If you're ready to start your franchise journey, visit streetwisefranchising.com. Let's set up a time to talk. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Until next time, stay humble, stay hungry. Stay streetwise. Peace.